Well, good evening and welcome and Merry Christmas. Uh, I just want to welcome everyone this evening to this Christmas Eve uh, celebration of the birth of Jesus uh, and the all of the good that has flown that has flowed from that event uh, and that continues to flow today. It's a joyous time. It's a difficult time being separated from family, as, as many of us are. Um, and I hope that this may be a memorable and joyful uh, Christmas for you, notwithstanding all the challenges. So let our worship begin. For those of you who have hymnals at home, our opening hymn is number 83, O Come All Ye Faithful. And for those who downloaded the booklet, it's number two.
Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, Christ the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth among all people. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for today's readings. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us pray Psalm 96 responsively by whole verse. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all people. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. 
As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes, when he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and all the peoples with his truth. A reading from Paul's letter to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is he, it, he it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Let us stand now for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, to you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, 
because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come as the wind and cleanse. Come as the fire and burn. Convert and consecrate our lives to our great good and your great glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Please be seated. I get so excited about Christmas. I get so excited to preach on Christmas. I get so nervous <laughs> to preach on Christmas because there's so much to say. What we celebrate tonight is called the Incarnation. And incarnation means uh, enfleshed. You hear the word carnivore, one, one that eats, uh, a creature that eats flesh. Incarnate means to be enfleshed. It is God with skin on it. And it is Jesus who, uh, who is the uh, perfect human being. Perfect, perfectly God, perfectly human, 
And it is a mystery that we cannot figure out because those two things seem so separate from us. I want to tell you uh, what I think the incarnation is like. I want to share with you uh, why uh, I think it is important and in fact is life-saving. And if I if I am faithful to what it is that I intend to do, we'll also talk about the Eucharist and how the Eucharist participates in the ongoing, this ongoing activity called the Incarnation. So what is the Incarnation like? Well, C.S. Lewis has a, has, a wonderful, um, has a wonderful description of it. And here's what C.S. Lewis talks about. Here's how he describes what the incarnation is about, what it is like. He says, one may think of a diver first reducing himself to nakedness, then glancing in midair, then gone with the splash, vanished, rushing down through the green and warm water into the black and cold water, down through increasing pressure into the death-like region of ooze and slime and old decay, then up again, back to color and light, his lungs almost bursting, till suddenly he breaks surface again, holding in his hand the dripping precious thing that he went down to recover. He and it are both colored now, that they have come up into the light from down below, where it lay colorless in the dark. He too lost his color. The incarnation is like this. There is a one and a half year old right in front of us, right here. Who among us, if the situation is appropriate, does not want to get down on the level with that child? We want to get down on the level with that child, not because we think that child is somehow doing something wrong or needs to be corrected or manipulated, or because we pity the child. Rather, we come down on our knees to engage with that child because we cannot do any other. We are made this way. This is what love looks like. Love gets down to the exact level of that which is being beheld and loved, and it can do no other. I submit that God did not come to become one of us because he was mad at us, because he was disappointed in us, because he was sick and tired of us doing the same thing over and over again. I submit that God saw us both as victim of sin and also somehow ensnared and participating and and continuing this twistedness in which we really want to be God and we don't want God to interfere with that. And God and God's mercy, first and foremost, first, excuse me, first and foremost, comes down into that space for all of that. It would be like the the child who is sort of staggering, you know, holding the hands up, and the mommy and the daddy are holding the, the child's hands, and they're doing this so the child can walk. That's what the incarnation looks like. It is a God that loves us so much that God refuses to remain separate from us. The lover, the great lover, becomes the beloved. It is like a teacher working with a child before COVID, working with a child who's making his or her letters for the first time. Making those letters, not getting it right. And what does the loving teacher do? The loving teacher hovers over the little girl and holds her hand and he says, no, honey, this is how you make those. This is how you make the, you make the loop here. 
This is what it feels like. This is the sense memory. Now, of course, they don't say that, but this is the sense memory of the thing. The incarnation is like this. It is like having done something wrong and going to jail, and your brother says, I'm not only going to visit you, I'm going to commit a petty crime so I can be with you, so you will not be alone in this. That is the love of God. The love of God that absolutely refuses to remain separate from us. And, and if I may say, refuses to leave us alone. Mm. Too merciful to just leave us alone to our own devices. And why does it matter? Why does it matter that God became human? Well, God could not have done the work of the crucifixion, of the death and resurrection, the, the purely innocent victim. God could not have done that work, which was the culmination of this thing that began in the incarnation. But I submit to you that God's incarnation in Jesus was saving in and of itself. It was saving in and of itself that the world became changed. Whether at the moment of conception or the moment of birth, the world changed and it never and it will never be the same. It will never be the same. It is like that jug of water in which you drop a few drops of dye and it changes color and you can't change it back. It has been changed forever. Why does all of this matter? I'm reminded of the story of an English woman who is a trainer of dogs. Very patient woman. I can't remember her name. And there was a dog, there was a dog who had been penned up its whole life, penned up, just doing this, just doing this all day, running around in a circle, in a pen. That's it. That's the dog's life. And this woman came and decided to work with this dog. And so she let the dog out on a leash. And, and what did the dog do? It's all the dog knows. Did she beat the dog? No. She coaxed the dog. Come on. Dog kept doing the same thing over and over. Come on, honey. Come on. Pretty soon the dog is just making bigger circles. Making bigger circles. Making bigger circles. Pretty soon the dog is kind of looking to the left, but walking straight. Pretty soon the dog, pretty soon the dog is walking straight ahead. Now when the dog hears a loud noise or gets anxious, what does it do? It goes right back to the thing that it did. But this woman, this holy woman of God, who is a God to this dog, mm. loves and is patient and tends and sticks with and continues to nurture this dog to, to be the creature that, that God created him or her to be. That's why it matters. And, and, and I would submit to you that in addition to this, it matters that God became a human being because God wanted us to become divine with God. This is what eternal life is about. Now, I feel a little heretical saying that, but I've got good evidence. I've got good backers. I've got a bunch of these early church fathers. Irenaeus, Irenaeus, who's most famous for saying, the glory of God is the flourishing of humankind. Irenaeus said, the word of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, did through his transcendent love become what we are that he might bring us to be 
even what he is himself. Athanasius said, he indeed assumed humanity that we might become God. By entering into the human realm, by entering into creation, God's activity did something that was new and that changed the world. This is what we do every Sunday at Holy Eucharist. Jesus loved us so much and wanted to continue to be among us. He just said, I want, I want to be in you. And so on the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so every Sunday what we do is we 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 participate in this divine activity in which these humble things like bread and wine, non-alcoholic wine when I'm, you know, drinking the wine, um, these things become infused with the divine. And it makes all of the difference. I close with this, with this one more story I, 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 tr I try not to tell too many stories about Epiphany um, because I feel like I'm talking to like uh, an old, about an old girlfriend with my fiance or my wife. <laughs> but um, thank you for laughing. <laughs> but I will tell you the experience that I had to talk about the power of why the Eucharist matters so much. The most dynamic thing we had going when I first arrived at that parish was yoga. We had yoga classes during the week. They had been kicked out of the Methodist church, not, not in South Haven, for those of you who may be watching, but the Methodist church up in Casco because it just wasn't quite Christian enough. So they came down, and in our process of redevelopment, we decided we'd look for the things that were the most flourishing and trust that those were signs of God's activity and we would cooperate with them. And, and a number of you have heard the story. What we did is we went to the yoga people and say, as far as we're concerned, you're parishioners. You don't have to come to church on Sunday, but you belong to us. This is your spiritual home. We are not going to make decisions without including you in these decisions. And furthermore, what we do on Sunday in the Eucharist makes possible, makes possible that the most holy thing to happen in that church during the week may very well happen on a yoga mat. That the very most important thing that we do opens up possibilities for the holiness of God to, to manifest everywhere. I think maybe this is why we don't write scripture anymore. Because we are the scripture. You are the scripture. You are the living scriptures. We are called to be God's embodied presence in the world. And we do it week after week by participating in the Eucharist and the world is transformed whether or not anyone else joins us. Nonetheless, the world is transformed because the love of God is in us and we become that love of God incarnate. We who God refuses to leave alone enter the world as God's hands and feet and heart in ways that make all of the difference. I close with this quote from Lord Alfred, Alfred Lord Tennyson. Come, my friends, tis not too late to seek a newer world. What a charge. Amen. Amen.
Let us now stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. From grateful hearts, let us intercede for all who find themselves longing for God's deepest, truest gift of Emmanuel, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. My sisters and brothers, in the peace of God, all the gifts we shall give and receive these days are but small tokens of the gift that shines forth in God's word made flesh. Today we lift our voices in thanksgiving for the incarnation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the development of the COVID vaccines. Are there others? For those writing and uh, the Advent meditations and for the meditations themselves. Yeah. For all those who are tending to people who've been sickened by the coronavirus or whose situation is dire because of the pandemic. We give thanks for the fellowship of our community of St. John's and to all who are listening to us now. For our families. For all essential workers. Let us praise the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our praise. praise that the peace proclaimed by angels in the shepherd's field might be realized on every field of war and on every street of violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the child born to us might find in our hearts warm welcome by our openness to the needs of the homeless and the hungry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in this time of gift giving, we might become more responsive to the poor, the abandoned, and the desolate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. that the rejoicing of this day might be a bond leading us to true communion of life and worship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the joy and consolation of the wonderful Counselor might enliven all who are struck down by disease and illness. Today we pray for many Fred, Cheryl, Kevin, Matthew, Bob, Alex and Abby, Tyler, Barb and Les, 
Jim and Nancy, Jerry Ann, Kevin and Marlene, Nancy, Marilyn and Richard, Annalise, Flair, Chris, Matt and family, and Larry. Are there others? Colin. Well, we pray for Denise. Denise. All those in hospice. And dad and her brother. For all those on the renal wall. Also have the prayers for our friend Clayton. For all those suffering with the virus. Because of the COVID travel restrictions this Christmas. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the blessed hope we celebrate this season might be the fulfillment of all who have gone before us in faith. We pray for those who have died and for those who grieve. We especially remember today Barbara, Elsie, Shirley, Lisa, Tom, Dean, Janet, Michael, Jenny, Bev, Catherine, and Carl. Are there others? We pray for um, those who grieve, Ed, the Jensen's and Ryan's, Ed and Joan, the Tibbets, Jim John, and Dora, and the Eisenberg all family, those who have died from the virus, Allison and the Lambdens, all those who have died from starvation, Father John and the Ferguson and family, violence. Daniel and Susan, Brianna Taylor, family, George Floyd, Child, and the Atwood family, Fred and Bernice. For all those named aloud and in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O God of light, you pierced night's darkness and created for us a new dawn, a hope fulfilled, your word made flesh. Make us a people of your light, faithful to your word, heralds of new life for a world that ever longs for the good news of your peace. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer each other a sign of that peace. Peace, Peace be, be with you, you Missy. <laughs> Rob, peace be with you. Peace be with you, Rob. Peace be with you, Alex. Peace be with you, Karen. Karen. Peace, peace. peace be with you, beloved. Peace, peace be with you, Carolyn. Peace be with you, Carolyn. Bob. Peace be with you, Bob. Peace be with you, Alex. Holy people of God, peace be with you. All righty. The only announcement that I have is that um, um, this Sunday uh, I'll begin a, a, to take a period of time off until the following Sunday. So on the 27th, we're asking folks to go to the cathedral, either the St. Mark's Cathedral or the National Cathedral. And, um, and then I'll look forward to seeing you the following Sunday. Missy? Merry Christmas. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> That's all we've got. Well, let us now with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and good. It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give knowledge of your salvation in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the, the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer you our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from, this, from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in this sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the blessed Virgin Mary, John our patron, and all your saints, we may, ever, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
And now, as our, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Passover. our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. God believes in, God believes in do-overs. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on this journey of faith, you are welcome to God's table to receive the bread and wine made holy. Deacon Missy, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. So whoever's doing the quarantine prayer will come last. Karen, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. Susan, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Carolyn, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Bob, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Bob, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Amen. Holy people of God, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are offered this day. And remembering the people of St. John's gathered now in our own homes, we long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts, souls, and minds. Let nothing separate us from you. May we serve you in this life until, by your grace, we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Amen.
Please stand as you are able for our post-communion prayer on page 17. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank, thank you, you for, for speeding us, us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we'll have the blessing now, and then the hymn, and then Deacon Missy will dismiss us into the good world. The blessing. May our infant Savior give you the joy of the shepherds, the awe of the magi, and the humility and love of the Holy Family. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 100, Joy to the World. Proclaim the word made flesh. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.